Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff, CEO of the Cybersphere Group. I'm here with Rupesh Chakshi, SVP, GM Application Security at Akamai here at Black Hat. Rupesh, what a pleasure to be with you here. Same here, you know, it's uh, great to be at Black Hat uh, 2025. I feel like the, the year has just like gone by so quickly, right? Especially in the world of cybersecurity. Oh, for sure. It feels like we were just at RSA together, learning about incredible things you're doing over there at Akamai. And I'm very excited to hear a lot more about what's going on. I'm certain that the audience has been paying attention and following Akamai and ready to hear more from you. So Rupesh, we've seen AI adoption skyrocket, and it'll be one of the primary topics we see here at the Black Hat Conference. So Rupesh, what's the most misunderstood risk lying under the radar right now? So you're right, right? It's just like the adoption is skyrocketing every single day. There's a headline on, hey, how is uh, you know, AI changing so many different industries, verticals, businesses, et cetera. And I think, I think what people are kind of missing a little bit is, you know, there is a lot of shadow AI happening, right? right? In terms of every company, even though the IT departments are very sophisticated, you know, there are in many cases where we have seen lots of shadow AI projects, programs kind of, you know, uh, taking place across the, the full spectrum. And part of it is driven by just the enthusiasm, right? In terms of what engineers want to do, what software developers want to do is to kind of demonstrate how they are utilizing this kind of generational change in technology and, and kind of demonstrating the benefits of it. So shadow AI is a big challenge uh, for all types of industries. Uh, I think the other thing is, you know, uh, the people are not really uh, thinking or maybe they are thinking that the traditional tools are good enough. So I, I would caution that because I don't think the current security armors that are in place would work in the scenario of AI and Gen AI apps and LLM based apps and Agentic, et cetera. So kind of think hard about that. Uh, I also think that, you know, there is the perception that detection is, is way too slow, right? So uh, that is something, you know, <laughs> in the world of AI, we need detections to be a lot more faster when it comes to security. So I think those are some common misunderstandings or myths. Oh, very true. And I love what you said, which is very true. A lot of things, obviously. But organizations are sometimes saying, what we have is good enough. But I love that you highlighted it's not. Technology is advancing at the speed of light, and we need to be right there with it or ahead of it. So exactly as you said, and people should take note, don't just sit and have what you have. Look to what's happening and what you need and what is important today, what's relevant. And AI is evolving, as we were discussing, so quickly, both in terms of technology itself and the adoption. So Rupesh, what new things are customers talking to you about that they weren't mentioning a few months ago? Yeah. So. <clears throat> Again, as you pointed out, right, the pace at which things are moving is yeah. very, very rapid, right? Sure. In my experience, uh, you know, high level, right? Last year it was like, hey, what is the, what is the Gen AI, or right. or what do I do, or what are the conversational AI agents, or you know, how do I understand Agentic? To then saying, hey, you know, is is everything going to change whether I'm in any particular type of uh, industry, maybe I'm in manufacturing and how is that going to impact me? So I feel the the questions on sort of what is it to now evolve to how do I adopt it? How do I bring it into my business processes? What can I do to have an impact? I think those are kind of big things that we're seeing. Uh, you know, we're seeing reports from the, the consulting companies like McKinsey and BCG. They talk about, hey, you know, 80% of the, the enterprises are already utilizing AI in, in one business unit or in one uh, business case, et cetera. And then this year, I think, you know, some categories are very well defined, like the whole kind of conversational AI agent or the AI chatbot or, or Gen AI powered applications that are interacting with users or end users. I think that has taken up a lot of shape and call it like, you know, the one dot of a Gentic, and then we're kind of on the path for a much more broader, sophisticated automation with the Gentic. 
Oh, very, very true. And it's interesting, as you said, you're right. A year ago, everything was just a buzzword and it was interesting and people were jumping on the bandwagon, not really understanding what was what, what they needed, what they wanted, but really diving deep, you're certainly bringing it to the forefront. And what, what business purposes are these AI applications serving? And what do companies want to achieve with their use of AI? I, I think they are really from a business perspective, right? I think the customers are really looking for, is there a differentiation in the user experience, the customer experience, right? Can I differentiate my product, my service, my experience? Can I go and uh, deliver more personalization? Can I uh, solve a problem, you know, faster or more efficiently, right? So the core underpinnings you know remain with any kind of technology investments and ai is the same but i think how you go about it is is very different right and lots of folks have talked about hey we are we are deploying models or llms and we're training them and we're we're looking at xyz and i feel now i have seen you know production rollouts i've seen businesses having customer facing ai chatbots and they are really helping those enterprises, those customers, those businesses with the whole personalization that they want to do or the speed at which they can respond or make it much more sort of, you know, natural language, right? And, uh, you know, as we have seen again and again, you know, I think the whole contact center or the user experience industry or, or you know, how do you serve your end users? That is the one that is first getting the transformation through all of these uh, AI applications. And I think a lot of it is also then utilized internally, where you say, if I'm a large corporation with 100,000 employees, you know, I would have my own AI chatbots answering all of the questions and needs for uh, my internal employee base or my, you know, uh, partners or my distributors or whatever that is, right? So that is, 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 is very real, it's here to stay. And then I think, as I mentioned before, you know, more and more agentic use cases are starting to be thought through where you can take a, a complex multi-step process and intelligently automate it and give AI sort of like the, the power or the authority to kind of solve the problem in the context. So if you're doing invoices or billing, or if you're going through certain you know, repeatable tasks, it can, it can keep doing those and it can get better at it. Oh, certainly. And, you know, there's all the types of problems we talk about. We talk about the business problems, we talk about the security problems. And what you discussed, it sounds like a business problem, not certainly a security problem, but we talk about the intersection of security and business. And what should the security teams do, if anything? So a lot of this, you know, kind of, <laughs> You know, power that we have is, is all about solving the business problems, etc. But at the core of it, I think what is happening is that right now, the AI security professionals are not weighing in or leaning in enough. And, and it needs to be right because you don't want security to be sort of like holding it back. You want security to be the enabler to the growth that uh, AI is gonna deliver for your enterprise or for your business, right? So I feel like it's definitely a business challenge, but also a, a, a security uh, challenge that needs to have a lot of focus on, right? Uh, we've seen again in some uh, uh, public reports that you know, more than 80% of the executives you know, identify cybersecurity as a top concern when they're implementing AI. So a you know, sizable amount of concerns around security and how do you go about it, et cetera. I would say at a high level, you know, a few things to keep in mind. So one is, hey, security leaders lean in early, you know, don't, don't just kind of put it on the side, lean in. I don't think this is a, a trend that's gonna go away. If anything, it's gonna multiply, it's gonna become much more bigger and faster very quickly. I think deploying AI specific uh, people, personnel, teams are important deploying AI specific protections are important. You often hear like AI red teaming or testing capabilities, uh, you know, and then establishing AI governance in terms of just a, a framework around how the data will be utilized and how will the information flows be there. So some of it is like a lot of, you know, basics, but you have to think about it and do it in the context 
of the technology, which is very different than the previous generation of technologies that we have dealt with. So uh, I do think, you know, security is a very important aspect and it can be a great enabler to kind of rocket the, the whole AI era that we're in. I certainly agree with that. And, you know, there's another thing that companies simply talk about or they're left standing there and they, they kind of are set in the tone of, it's good enough for now. We have so many things to focus on. We have limited budgeting. And they think, you know what, we're secure enough. We really don't need anything else right now. Let's wait on that and move forward in the areas where we want to spend the money, want to focus the people, which could be a big problem, as you know, in industry. So if they have that mindset, what do you believe is the blind spot when it comes to AI workloads? So I'll give you a, a, a factoid, right? So just on Akamai, you know, we've seen in the first half 2025, we've seen, you know, on an average, like a, a 1 billion requests each day from the AI bots, right? So clearly, you know, the traffic on the, on the internet is, you know, lots of it is with the AI bots or AI uh, scrapers or information that is being collected or even information that is being exchanged utilizing uh, AI agents, et cetera. So that, that phenomenon is, is already occurring. Uh, and despite all of the, the hype around AI as a, as a business enabler, I, I do think, you know, attackers and the bad guys are, you know, adopting faster. They are figuring out how to break in. They are kind of exploiting the APIs. They're exploiting the apps at massive scale. And you know they're already utilizing AI to kind of create some of these things. We've also seen, you know, a lot of like you know deep fake and and kind of socially engineered uh, challenges when it comes to uh, security. So I, I see it as a significant threat, and I think there's a headline every day on. And and you know the interesting thing is that in the world of AI, it's not just about you know prompt injections or sort of like you know a little bit more. Uh, deterministic. I think you're dealing with many other undeterministic items, whether it is uh, hallucinations or or hate speech or, you know, different ways it's going to react. And again, we've seen so many headlines from very prominent social media platforms where, you know, some of the AI agents and, and all of that has gone a little bit edgy or more than expected, right? So that is a concern. Well, thank you for that. And, and Rupesh, as you know, every time I sit and we do interviews, I always like to ask my guests a cybersecurity tidbit or helpful hint that they personally would like to share with the audience, whether it being something personal, business, anything you like. And I know your wealth of information is so something that you'd like to share with our audience today. So what I'll do is I'll, this time, let me go on a little bit on the, on the personal side. Like Please. I think that as a society, we are not paying enough attention when it comes to security and privacy and especially sort of you know the younger generation so i would want all the parents and all the kids to step back and really think about you know what information are you putting out there because there is no delete on the internet yes well rupesh those are wise words and i know our audience loved everything that you shared today super important and I'm actually very excited to continue our conversation tomorrow and the next day at Black Hat. So thank you so much for your time. I hope the rest of Black Hat is successful for you. And I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Look forward to it. Thank you.